My name is Maggie Van Galen, and I'm the author of the children's book series, The Adventures of Kino and Ernest. Today, I'm going to read to you The Banana Tree, the first book in the series. I always ask all of my listeners to first close their eyes and envision that they're in the jungle. Now, I've never been to the jungle, but I envision it to be very warm, very green, maybe it's raining, maybe you hear some noises of animals that you're not used to, different birds. Is everybody in the jungle? Great. Let's begin. Once upon a time, deep in the jungle, there lived two best friends. The first was a very mischievous monkey named Kino. Kino was always getting himself into trouble. But thankfully for Kino, his best friend in the whole world was a wise elephant named Ernest. Ernest was always there for Kino. One day, while Kino was swinging on the vines high up in the jungle, he spotted a bright yellow glow off in the distance. As he moved closer, he saw a giant yummy banana tree just on the other side of the river. Wow, said Kino as his tummy started to rumble. Look at all of those bananas. I have got to tell Ernest about this. He swung down shouting, Ernest, where are you? Ernest, who was busy munching on leaves, heard Kino's call and looked up to the tree canopy. Kino was so excited that he was out of breath. Ernest, Ernest, guess what I just found? It's a huge banana tree with hundreds, maybe thousands of super yummy bananas. It's way better than our old banana tree that we always go to. Let's go. Okay, I'm right behind you. Show me the way, Ernest said excitedly. Kino was already starting to swing toward the newly found tree and yelled back, This way, just across the river. Wait, did you say across the river? questioned Ernest. We can't cross the river. Our parents told us never to cross the river without them, remember? It's really dangerous, Kino. The river's too wide, and the current runs super fast. Plus, Mom told me there are animals living there that like to eat us. I know, said Kino, but I looked at the current. It's not so fast today. Plus, if I ride on your back and we cross by the bamboo tree where it's not so wide, we'll be fine. You're so big and strong, Ernest. Nobody will mess with us. Kino pleaded. Please, Ernest, please. Ernest was thinking hard about Kino's plan. Those bananas did sound like a tasty treat. But he knew that Kino's adventures usually went wrong and that his parents would be very disappointed if he didn't follow the rules. I don't want to go, Ernest finally said. A banana is a banana. Let's just go to our old favorite tree and get bananas there. But those aren't as big or as yellow as the bananas on the new tree, complained Kino. It's too dangerous, argued Ernest, and I don't want to get in trouble with Mom and Dad. Okay, fine, Kino said with a pout on his face. I guess I'll just meet you up at the old tree. Ernest started off, and Kino swung back up into the jungle, planning to meet him there. As Kino got higher up, he saw those bananas across the river again. They were shimmering in the late morning sun and looked so delicious. Suddenly, Kino had an idea. I will build a raft out of bamboo and vines, float across the river, grab a bunch of bananas, and surprise Ernest with them. I'll be there and back before he even gets to our old tree. He's going to be so sorry to have missed this adventure. It didn't take Kino long to put together his raft. He put ten bamboo poles side by side and then tied them together with vines. He grabbed an extra long stick to use as a paddle. Kino pushed off from the riverbank and slowly started floating toward the other side. Ha! This is easy, Kino said to himself with a smile. The shiny new banana tree was getting closer and closer. He could almost taste them. As he got closer to the middle of the river, a funny thing started to happen. 
Instead of going across the river, he started to float down the river. He paddled harder, but it didn't make any difference. The current was too strong and began to carry Kino away. What am I going to do? thought Kino. As Kino was trying to sort out how he would get himself out of this mess, he heard a dull roaring noise up in the distance. What's that? Kino said aloud. It can't be the lions. They sleep during the day. It can't be a thunderstorm. There's not a cloud in the sky. The noise was getting louder and louder as Kino went further down the river. Kino was getting worried. Just then, Kino and Ernest's friend, Toucan Tom, flew overhead. His rainbow-colored beak shone brightly in the late morning sun. Tom looked down and saw Kino waving frantically at him. Tom swooped down and landed on the raft. Nice raft, Kino, Toucan Tom said. What are you doing? Kino told him the story of the banana tree, the raft, his plan to surprise Ernest with the new bananas, and the current taking him away. By the way, Tom, Kino asked, what is that loud noise up ahead? That is the waterfall, Kino, Tom said with a worried voice, and you are headed straight for it. Wa waterfall Kino started to get scared. Tom, you have to find Ernest. He'll know what to do. He always knows what to do. Quick! He's headed up to the old banana tree. Tell him what's happening and bring him back. Tom flew off as fast as his wings would carry him. Hurry, shouted Kino behind him. It didn't take long for Tom to find Ernest. Ernest, Ernest, Toucan Tom was yelling as he dove through the forest, weaving in and out of vines and narrowly missing trees. Ernest looked up in surprise. What is it, Tom? It's Kino, screeched Tom. He's in trouble on the river. On the river, questioned Ernest. Yes, come quick. Hurry. Tom was almost out of breath. I'll tell you on the way. Toucan Tom repeated the story that Kino had told and explained about the waterfall and how Kino was only moments away from real danger. You have to do something, Ernest, said Tom with a fearful look in his eye. Ernest was already running at top speed, slaloming trees and trampling bushes. He was thinking and planning as he went. As he neared the riverbank, he could see Kino drifting toward the waterfall. He was waving his arms and yelling, Help! Oh, Ernest, help me, please! Don't worry, Kino, Ernest yelled back. I'll save you. Ernest ran up ahead to look at the waterfall and plan his rescue. He noticed that just before the falls, the river narrowed, and on the opposite side, a tree had toppled over and stuck straight out. Ernest devised the rescue plan. He would wade out into the river and stretch his trunk as far as he could, and Tom would fly over to the fallen tree to mark it. Kino could then jump to either side. It was his only chance. Ernest told Tom the plan. Tom flew out to the raft to explain it to Kino. Kino was still scared, but he knew that Ernest was his best friend and had never let him down before. As the raft rounded the last bend in the river, Kino could see Ernest, only his head and trunk above the water. Toucan Tom was perched on the tip of the tree that reached out from the other side. Kino began to paddle as hard and as fast as he could. He was trying to aim for Ernest, and much to his delight, the raft was going in the right direction. I'm going to be saved, thought Kino delightedly. Kino was within arm's reach of Ernest when suddenly the raft spun around from a change in the current. Kino almost lost his balance, but thanks to his good jumping, he leapt toward Ernest and just managed to wrap his tail around his trunk. The raft shot out from underneath him and went over the waterfall. The three friends watched as the raft broke up into little pieces. Kino was shaking with fright and relief. Ernest slowly backed out of the water. He lowered his trunk to the ground, but Kino wouldn't let go. I'm so sorry, Ernest, Kino cried. Thank you for saving me. Well, of course you're welcome, Kino, Ernest said. I'm just glad you're all right and didn't get hurt. 
but you should have never tried to cross the river. There are reasons our parents don't let us. I'd say this is a pretty good reason, wouldn't you? I know, said Kino, still shaken. You're my best friend in the whole jungle, Ernest, and I promise not to get into any more trouble. Ernest laughed. Well, I doubt that. But you're my best friend, too, and I will always be there to get you out of trouble. Now let's go home and tell your parents what happened. Before heading home, the two friends decided to head up to their favorite old banana tree on the right side of the river and bring a bunch of yummy bananas home to Kino's mom. She makes the best banana cream pie in the whole jungle, and maybe, just maybe, it would make telling her what happened a little easier. The End I hope you enjoyed the adventures of Kino and Ernest the Banana Tree. The two other stories that follow in the series, A New Friend and The Diamond Mine, will also be made into read-along stories and will be coming soon. For more information on me or the adventures, please go to my website at www.kinoandernest.com.